Hey everybody, welcome back to Sophisticates by Mary. For this video, I'm going to kind of take you back to where I really came from with cake design in this absolutely gorgeous, understated white cake with some floral accents. So if this sounds like something you want to see, stick around. So of course, the first thing we need to do is to prepare our cakes. So I am using some, this time I think it's Wilton fondant, Wilton? And I am just kneading it and rolling it out to place it on my top tier. This effect that I'm going to use, since it is made with wafer paper, you really need to make sure that it's not going to get wet. So I find the best way to do that is to cover a buttercream cake or a ganache cake and fondant. It's kind of that barrier in between the two. So I'm using cornstarch on my surface and on top of it a little bit to keep the rolling pin from sticking and to keep the fondant sticking to the mat itself. So roll this out to about a quarter to an eighth of an inch thickness. And I'm just using a, a needle to pop some air, uh, air bubbles that uh, you inevitably get in your fondant and then just smooth it out with your smoother. And this cake is covered in ganache. It's already assembled and just ready to be decorated. And I am just rubbing a little bit of shortening on the cake to get the fondant to stick. Now, I gotta always say, make sure your hands are clean and dry when you do this. When you are touching your edible things, you need to make sure your hands are clean. If you ever see any color on, on my hands that might look like dirt, I guarantee that is just food coloring. <laughs> So drape your fondant on top of the cake and smooth it on the top first. Make sure it's sticking and around that edge on the top corner because you don't want the weight of the fondant to to rip it. And then just kind of pleat it, you know, unfold those pleats and rub it as you go down. Now I will say that um, Wilton is fine, but it's not my fondant of choice. What I do find is that you end up getting a lot of elephant skin, even with adding shortening to it, and it likes to dry out real fast. And it does tear a little bit more than, say, a marshmallow fondant. That is my preferred fondant, but you know, that takes time to make. And for video purposes, I kind of have to use what's gonna be fast because I do this on my time off. So I'm just going ahead and making sure that it's, is, even as I can get it, it's going to have a textured effect. So if it's not perfect, it's not going to really matter. The main part is to make sure that you get the sides and the top level and you get a sharp corner. Now go ahead and set that to the side to dry out a little bit before you do your wafer paper snow is what I'm going to call it. Wafer paper snow effect on it. And I'm just leaving it at room temperature because, like I said, you do not want it to get moisture on it. And placing it in a refrigerator to set up, I know this goes against everything I ever ever show you, is um, not a good idea for this. Because condensation will melt that wafer paper and we do not want that. So set it aside at room temperature. You can set it in a cooler room if you prefer, just not in a refrigerator. And moving on to our bottom tier here, we started with an already ready to go cake again. And it was four layers of cake, I believe in that one. I think they're both four layers of cake. No, the top one was three layers, the bottom one was four layers. And I am just covering this crumb coated cake that was crumb coated in ganache with the final coat of my American buttercream, American crusting buttercream. And then set that aside and you can actually put that in the refrigerator to firm up if you prefer. And then now I'm just making that wafer paper snow. And all I'm using is just wafer paper. Now you can use your scraps if you make florals or anything with wafer paper and you end up having cut off scraps, save those because these are those are perfect for this. I just didn't have that this time. So I'm just ripping it up and I'm using a Ninja processor. You could use um, any kind of a processor that you want. Actually, even a coffee grinder will get you a really, really fine, suede type texture to your wafer paper, and that's pretty too. But I wanted it to be a little bit more texturized, kind of just flaked. And then I'm adding some champagne colored luster dust. Some of it I did two different colors. One is opaque, and the other one has some pearlescence to it. You can add any color you want to at this point because it's going to mix into that wafer paper as you process it. Let's see, we have little snowflakey little 
flakes of wafer paper that I think are pretty, really pretty. So just go ahead and put it in a bag until you're ready to use it. And now we're going to go ahead and move on to our white chocolate bark texture. I'm just using some parchment paper. I make sure that it's long enough. Measure the circumference of your cake, fold it in half. And then I'm just using straight white chocolate. You could use white chocolate bark if you like. You just have to work really fast with it because it sets up faster. Now I've never done it with candy melts for that same purpose because I think it sets up a little too fast. But if you want the real white white, I didn't mind the off white because to me it's more of like a winter white and I I kind of prefer that color anyway. But you can go ahead and you try the candy melts if you like. You can actually even use some um, oil-based candy coloring that might thicken it up a little bit. Even though it's oil-based, sometimes it can actually thicken it up a little bit. And then you could use some vegetable oil to thin it out some. But be careful with that too because it softens the white chocolate. White chocolate is softer than any other kind of chocolate. Since it's a man-made chocolate, it does not have that that hard texture to it when it when it cools if you add anything to it. So go ahead and just roll that up onto a dowel is what I used and then place it into your freezer. And I'm just showing you how I made two sheets of this so that I had enough to go with. And go ahead and set that in the freezer to firm up. And in the meantime, we're gonna go back to that top tier. And what I'm brushing on here is just some, some piping gel mixed with a little bit of water. The piping gel makes the water okay for the wafer paper in adhering your um, snow to your cake. Now I'm just smoothing it, or not, I'm sorry, spooning it around where I put the piping gel. I'm doing maybe four inch wide sections at a time because you don't want it to dry out before you actually apply your texture to it. And I started with a fan brush there, but I was having trouble getting it all the way to the top. So I just went ahead and started using my hand. You just put it in your hand and just kind of guide it up along the side of the cake and use what has fallen off too. You don't have to waste that. You can use that. And then continue doing this around your cake. And I do have a sheet pan underneath my turntable that you can't see right now to collect the extra flakes so that I can gather them up and save them and reuse them later. And it helps to clean up your mess. And go ahead and do the same thing to the top, making sure to get that edge. I'm just using my hand to kind of guide it around that corner. And brush off the excess. And then you want to set it aside after, well, actually, okay. <laughs> I went ahead and made sure that it was fully covered, obviously. And then I'm going to brush off the extra into that sheet pan. And then set it aside for it to dry. Again, at room temperature, not in the refrigerator. Now I just put everything back that I didn't use back into the Ziploc bag and set it aside. Just keep it at room temperature for another day. I'm just using a round cutter to mark where I'm going to put my dowels, my support system. I'm just using the big fat boba straws and pushing them through. This cake was chilled, so it was really hard for me. <laughs> oh, I'm really struggling there. Hard for me to get that those straws all the way down. But once I did, I went ahead and just cut them flush with the top of the cake. I use a little buttercream to attach the top tier. And it has sat and firmed up a little bit and dried. So I am just pulling it, taking it off of the board that I decorated it on and just placing it on top of that buttercream. Now you could fill in that edge if you want to, but I um, act, knew I was gonna put some flowers, so I just didn't bother. And then remove your chocolate rolls out from the freezer and unroll them. And it will create that bark texture just by the simple act of unrolling it. That is gonna crack it in long pieces. And I actually, see there it is, isn't that pretty? I have never done this with white chocolate before. I thought I have done it. I did it recently at the bakery for um, dark chocolate. And I've done it before with milk chocolate, dark and other brown chocolates for a bark texture. But I thought, wow, wouldn't that be pretty as just a texture for a white cake? This would be really pretty for a wedding cake or just a birthday for a girl. 
And yeah, I just really think this was pretty. Sometimes you don't always have to use a technique for what it's meant for. Like this technique was meant for a bark texture, but it doesn't have to be. Change the color, it becomes something totally different. Changes don't have to be complicated. <laughs> It doesn't have to be complicated. Don't overthink it. I always say it. Don't overthink it. Just do it. And I'm attaching these with some piping gel and some of the pieces I ended up using some buttercream because they didn't want to stick. And just kind of randomly place them. And then fill in any gaps that you have. If you don't want to see through to the buttercream, just fill in the gaps. But since the buttercream is the same color as the chocolate, I didn't worry too much about it. And I'm just using, again, silk flowers. Like I say, I like the edible flowers or um, fresh, but financially, why it doesn't make any sense for me to be buying flowers every week. They're not cheap. Nothing is cheap now. So I just use a little buttercream to attach the flowers. I'm not sticking in them in the cake whatsoever. They're just sitting in the buttercream that I piped on top. And you just randomly place them however looks pretty to you. Use whatever colors you want. This is where you can just use your creativity and what you like or what your client likes. If your client has a color palette, go with their color palette. And please excuse the back of my head. I was having trouble. In the Midwest, the sunlight this time of the year is really difficult to work with. The sun kind of sits right, comes right in the window during the day now so I have to close the, the curtain and it anyway I'm venting <laughs> back to the pretty cake I just used some filler flowers too those kind of fill in the gaps there you go guys I really hope you enjoyed this because like I said this kind of takes me back to my roots the the pretty soft wedding cakes that I've kind of veered away from with doing the modern abstract cakes. But this is pretty too. I hope you enjoyed it. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much, and we'll catch you on the next tutorial.